G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for another Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls Legendary Set Crafting Guide. In this video I'm going to be going over the Ashira set, what it does, and how to craft it in the most easy fashion. So, this set includes the Ashira's Pace Pants, Ashira's Finder's Boots, Ashira's Custodian Shoulders, and Ashira's Ward's uh, Gloves. Hopefully I'm saying Ashira's right, we'll find out later. I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments if I'm not. But uh, the two set bonus is 100 Auras, which is, you know, a decent amount of extra ore resistance. So this is a nice sort of starter set. Uh, it uh, Each of the items can roll higher than rare, so it's a nice stepping stone set for a lot of characters. And the three set bonus is 20% life, which is actually pretty hefty. And uh, if you have a decent amount of vitality, that will give you a lot of extra effective life. Uh, with this, compared to my normal gear, I'm, I go from something like 480k to 560k uh, HP. So a pretty big HP increase. But uh, the four set bonus is the one that makes you kind of decide to craft this set over other sets, you know. You can get toughness anywhere, but uh, the four set bonus is pretty pretty crazy good. I reckon this is a very good set in hardcore. This is going to be a very nice stepping stone for most classes and most characters until you can get your best in slot legendaries. So, for example, I could use this if I didn't have my mage fists and things like that. I could use this in place of those until I got those better legendaries. But uh, a lot of people actually probably want to use this well into endgame because the four set bonus causes your attacks to uh, occasionally summon all of your followers to your aid. So you'll notice now, I have no followers. I have my wolf, that's just a wolf companion pet. So uh, that guy doesn't do anything there. But let's let's just attack some stuff here. It shouldn't take too long. There we go. So you'll see now I've just attacked some mobs, and you'll see all three of my followers have spawned. Now each of these guys are geared up however you have geared them up. So if you've geared them, them out in a bunch of really good legendaries, then they'll be using all of those. And they'll also use all of the skills that they have uh, on their character. So your Templar will heal, he'll taunt, you know, your, uh, your, ro your uh, Scoundrel will provide extra DPS and crits and things like that and slows. And the Enchantress will put out all of her CC. I even have the legendary item on the Enchantress that makes her use all of her skills. So she will use all those very often. Now they stick around for about 30 seconds. And uh, if you're sort of in like the thick of combat and attacking pretty fast and you know farming mobs pretty fast, they'll actually be up a lot of the time. Now this means that, you know, although when you, if you only have one follower with you, you'll have one follower with you all the time, and then when it procs, uh, all three of your followers will come to your aid and for the next 30 seconds, and you know, as I said, you can keep it up a lot of the time. So in hardcore, this means extra targets to tank for you, and a lot of extra abilities to sort of heal you and protect you and, you know, take out the mobs and stuff like that. So, very, very nice set bonus overall. I think a lot of people have kind of cottoned onto the fact that this is very, uh, very powerful set bonus, especially in hardcore, but even in softcore, still very nice nice sort of thing to have until you get those better items so pretty impressive now the other thing is that I believe it also works in party games I haven't tested that just yet but uh, a few people confirmed with me that yes it does work in party games and it's possible to summon all of your followers to your aid when you're with a party so that's a nice extra feature there where you can actually have your followers in a party game and you see they're back up again they'll stick around for the next 30 seconds or so unleashing havoc on my enemies so let's head back to town and I'll uh, show you guys what you need to do to craft this item so in addition to the basic uh, arcane dust, veiled crystals, forgotten souls, death's breaths that you need, and the white items, which at the very end I'll go over a location to farm the white items nice and easily for this set, you need the legendary crafting material, Iron Wolves Doctrine. Now this dro drops in a couple of places, but there's one really extremely easy place to farm this. And uh, I mean easy, easy as. It took me about 20 minutes to uh, farm up enough materials to make two full sets. So uh, it's very, very quick. And let's just go jump straight into it. So what you want to do is you're going to want to set up a new game and you're going to want to set it up as a campaign. So we'll go to game settings campaign. I recommend just doing this on normal or whatever. Something is normally easy for you for the first run through. So what we're going to be doing is, is change the quest. We're going to be selecting act two, blood and sand and the waterlogged passage. So we're going to start this game just here. Now I'm just going to change my quest briefly so that I actually have to uh, sort of uh, get the actual quest state again. But here we go. We should be able to jump in just here and I'll show you guys what you need to do to set up this. We're going to be uh, farming the purple mob called Stharis, which uh, has a very difficult name to pronounce. This seems to be the theme of today is difficult names to pronounce. But you'll notice I have a waypoint. I can't seem to unset this at the moment, but I'm going to show you guys what you need to do to get this waypoint anyway. You're going to go to the Dalgor Oasis. Just set yourself up with a move speed ability. And uh, so I'm just going to be using Vault with my Denetta set nice and fast. And we're just going to be vaulting around the map until we get the top, very top of the map. So heading around this way, there's the uh, entry for one of the dungeons, so we're going to skip this. And continue heading northwards, and uh, we probably need to go over to the right here, because that would just be a dead end over there. So north, sort of to the north, uh, east, up here. You'll see the bridge is just here. Now you'll see, the, here's Tharis here. Now it's very important that you don't kill him 
uh, running through now. So we're going to leave him there. Hopefully our followers don't kill him. And get into here. Now when you get into here, you'll see checkpoint uh, come up on screen. Now because I already have the checkpoint, it's not going to happen for me. So then what you can simply do is leave the game. So I'm going to just teleport back to town and I'll leave the game. And this checkpoint will be maintained. This is exactly like farming Manglemore uh, back in the day before he was nerfed. So we're going to leave the game. And then what we're going to do is we're going to boost the difficulty up as high as you can handle doing Stharis. Now, Stharis has pretty low HP, you can kill him very quickly, but he does a fair bit of damage. He has a Lightning Storm ability and summons as, so he's, he's a little bit dangerous. If you're in hardcore, I'd suggest doing this on a pretty low difficulty, uh, just to be safe until you know what you can handle. Now, I think uh, like I can do like Torment 4 or 3. We'll do Torment 3 here. This is, the drop rate on Torment 3 is pretty decent, and on Torment 1 it's about 30%, and it goes up from there. So. Do the highest difficulty you can if you really want to speed this up, but don't, you know, spend 10 minutes fighting him trying to stay alive and everything. So we're going to resume the game there, and when we load into the game, you'll notice this uh, teleport is here, up to the ancient waterway, and this will take us inside this room now. You want to set yourself up with some sort of single target, uh, efficient spec if you really want to min-max this out, but my spec's going to work just fine for this. And we're going to head just out the doorway, and you'll see Cyrus will spawn just here. So I'll use all my abilities here. We'll kill him nice and quickly. I'll keep stunning. You see that lightning storm just there is pretty dangerous. Also, he'll spawn these adds there that use that lightning ability there. And there we go. One Iron Wolves Doctrine. Then simply teleport back to town after you clear up those ads, leave the game, and do it again. Each time that waypoint will spawn and each time Tharis will go. So I'll just do it one more time just to show you guys. So, loading back into the game here, creating game, we simply resume, we don't need to change the quests or anything, you don't need to run the entire zone all again, you just jump back in, and the teleport we're here, you can see how quickly this, uh, how quickly this, how quick this is to do, basically, it takes you, like, less than a minute to jump in and do a game, and as long as you're doing an appropriate difficulty, you'll know, you'll have a pretty good drop chance, while also being able to do it super fast, so, here comes another hit, I'll use my vengeance to finish him off there. Clear up these ads. He's been chickenified by our followers from wearing the actual Asura's set here. And there we go, we've got another Iron Wolves Doctrine. So already two, we're already half of the way there to completing a full set. It really doesn't take very long at all. That's why this is such a nice uh, sort of beginner's set to craft. And uh, also just a nice one to fill out your gear slots if you really need to as well. So uh, the last thing I want to talk about was the uh, the white items you'll need. Now you'll notice that you need, obviously, a pair of ascended gauntlets, a pair of ascended pauldrons, a pair of ascended pants, a pair of ascended boots, and all that jazz. The best way to do this is actually to switch over to adventure mode. So I'm going to be leaving the game just here. And you probably want to put the difficulty all the way down, so we'll just put it down, uh, we'll just put it on normal even. And what we're going to do is change to adventure mode and start a game in adventure mode. Now, if you've seen the other crafting guides, you've probably already seen this method. This is the same method you'll use when crafting any armor set, because it's extremely fast to do. So, we're going to jump into the game. And we're going to go to Act 5 West March Battlefields of Eternity. Now, simply run around the outsides of this zone here. It's You can duck into the mills, but I find the outsides to be very fast. And you're looking for these piles of decaying armor. Now, you know this one's grayed out. Now, this one here is uh, Inferior Ascended Pauldron, so we're going to ignore that one, because that one won't work in the crafting set. But uh, you usually find like 10 to 15 of these uh, armor sort of these armor racks, these armor piles in any in any particular run. So there's another one there. We've got a pair of the boots. So we, there we go. We're already good for the boots. We're going to continue heading through. And as I said, you'll find about 10 to 15. You can duck into some of the dungeons as well if you want to. Uh, some armor piles will spawn in there as well. But just doing like two or three runs of this external zone here for these piles will get you uh, pretty much the entire set. Unless you're extremely lucky and having trouble with one particular item slot. But there we go, we've got, now we've got Ascended Helmet, that's not for this set, but we can keep that aside for later if we want to. And uh, continue running around, as you can see, if you just set yourself up with some sort of movement ability, teleport, doing it all normal means that the mobs aren't going to be any sort of hassle. There's another set there. There we go, there's our Ascended Pauldrons, we've got two out of the four already. So, as you can see, this, this is very fast as well, just as like the other things. Oh, getting attacked by mines! Very nice and fast. So the last thing I'll share with you guys is just some tips on what to craft, uh, what to try and aim for for each item set. Just some basic recommendations. So when looking at the Ashira's Custodian, the shoulders, uh, this is your defensive slot. The one non-defensive thing you can put on this slot that's uh, good for some builds is uh, either cooldown reduction or reduced resource cost. Like for example, on my usual shoulders I have resource cost reduction and uh, that's a good one to go for. Otherwise you're just going to be going for dexterity, vitality, uh, either armor or all resist, uh, depending depending on whether it's got a resistance as your secondary stat, or um, uh, percentage life is also a good one to aim for there. You'll see these uh, shoulders just here, my pauldrons of the skeleton kim, are a good sort of aim thing to aim for there. Dexterity, vitality, armor, reduced resource cost, and a secondary resist. That's the sort of thing you want to aim for the shoulders, just a pure defensive slot. 
Now next for the gloves, your Ashira's wards, these are a very offensive slot, so you want to get your main stat, so dexterity in my case. And then, uh, depending on your build, you may want to go for attack speed, crit damage, and crit chance, that trifecta of those three stats there. However, as a demon hunter, I don't rate the attack speed too much, and I'd primarily go for crit damage and crit chance. As you can see, these pair of gloves I've got here is something that I would probably just salvage and try and craft another pair of gloves, because uh, there's no dexterity, there's no crit chance. I could reroll one of these stats, like life per hit, to crit chance or crit damage, uh, sorry, crit chance or dexterity, but I'm not going to be able to get both. So this is a pretty bad pair of gloves there. I'd recommend going for like 40 to 50 crit damage, uh, you know, 9 to 10 crit chance, and then your dexterity roll, sort of at least above halfway uh, if you want to try and get a pretty nice pair of those gloves. Pants are another really defensive slot, so you can go for just dexterity, vitality, or resist all armor. And uh, you can also get uh, one of your primary attack skills here as well. So this is one's rolled 15 entangling shot. This is actually a pretty nice pair of pants here. You can see the the roll and the dexterity is quite low, but the vitality is quite high. The, the all resist is high, and it's got a maxed out entangling shot, which is actually a pretty useful primary attack for demon hunters. So this is actually a pretty nice pair of pants here for a beginner demon hunter. I would probably keep these and re-roll the dexterity to be a higher range, and then you're good to go. And then for boots, uh, you just want to go for main stat, vitality, and then uh, move speed, and probably your primary secondary skill. So this has elemental arrow damage. I'd want to go for cluster arrow damage. Now, uh, you can go for move speed or not move speed, depending on your build. If you need uh, maximum hatred from your paragon points, then you may want to go for move speed on your boots. Otherwise, you may want to neglect the move speed on your boots. Instead, pick up another, you know, like a, vita a dexterity roll or something like that. I could reroll these move speeds into dexterity here just pretty easily and, uh, you know, take the extra damage from that and get the paragon points to spend my deck my decks uh, to get my move speed basically so a uh, pretty pretty simple stuff you know just a basic nice solid all-round set and that set bonus is really wicked so hopefully this has helped you guys that's it for now i'm ziggy d and thanks for watching